Hey guys, it's Robbie from MoTeC. It snowed in Vegas today, so I thought it would be interesting to see a couple of unusual things that we have going on in the shop. So here's one of four LT1 builds we have going on in the shop. This one's about to get its harness and then we'll drop the body. This LT1 is new from GM Performance. You can tell by these stainless manifolds. We've got a new GM transmission. We've got a 241J transfer case. You can see what we did here with the fuel lines, how we pop them out of the front of the fuel tank, get them up and away from that exhaust. This LT1 is going to run the factory LT1 accessories. They're not on right now, but I'll show you them when we do get them on. We're going to end up having our air compressor over here, our alternator over there, and we've got a water pump on this side where the truck has it on the driver's side. This is an idler pulley that we make and the power steering pump is going to go right here and I'll show you that bracket when we get it installed. This Jeep does have hydraulic steering and you can see that this is ported for the V8. You can tell because the port comes out the front rather than the back which they usually do for the V6s. You can see we have our easy mounts installed. We've got an LT1 oil pan installed on this engine, not a truck oil pan. This has got shock reservoirs. Pretty much this LT1 is very compact and it fits in the place of the Pentstar very well with no interferences. There's been no modifications to this chassis. These engine mounts bolt in, we haven't changed the brake lines, we haven't changed any of the wiring. We don't open up the brake system on these builds and in general we don't open up the power steering but on some of these LT1s when we relocate the pump we do. Here's another interesting build we're going to be doing in the shop. It's going to be on this Jeep here. We're putting an L99 in it, which is basically an LS3 with variable valve timing. And this Jeep is getting a Tremec 6-speed, four-wheel drive. This Tremec 6-speed is built by Rockland Gear in New York. You can see it has a hydraulic slave cylinder. We're going to be running the stock JK master cylinder. We have a LS7 bell housing. This is an LS1 throw-up bearing. We're going to be running a LS7 pressure plate and flywheel. You can see the four-wheel drive adapter. This adapter is designed for a 241. We're going to basically put the 241 on there, clock it to where we want it to be, and then drill our holes. We're going to be making our own shifter for this build. So this is going to be an interesting build, this heavy JK with 450 horsepower and a six-speed manual transmission. So here's an LT1 in a chassis. We're finishing up the electronics. I wouldn't say this is oddball, but I will say it is unusual because We've been doing these LTs now for a couple of years, and I think the rest of the market is finally starting to catch up. We've done a lot of these now. We've got our own brackets and our own electronics, and we're using factory harnesses. It's a, one of the best running engines out there, especially with the eight-speed transmission. And if we step over here, we can see a two-door. A lot of guys ask me, hey, do you do two-doors? Yeah, of course, we do them all the time. Biggest difference with a two-door is the exhaust system and how we lay the exhaust system out. So they're building the exhaust system on this two-door right now. This two-door has a L99, which is about a 430 horsepower 6.2. And in this short coupled vehicle, it's a pretty quick engine. In fact, here's the proud owner of this two-door. How you doing, Luis? Great, man, how you doing? You looking forward to driving your Jeep? Yes, sir. How'd you like the V6? Hated it. So here's another two-door, and this one's interesting in that this build was done about five years ago by us. It now has about 70,000 miles on it. And you can see that this has been back east. I believe this was Ohio in the harsh climate back there. And you can see the toll that's taken on the bracketry. I can tell you this Jeep runs great. It's got a uh, 6.2 aluminum engine in it. It's here because the radiator is leaking pretty badly. This isn't a really early design radiator. And we're probably going to end up upgrading this Jeep to the Camaro SS fan and a new radiator. Aluminum radiators and off-road vehicles that flex a lot can be an issue. So we've got some new stuff we're doing, and we'll apply it to this vehicle. This vehicle has one of our early handmade harnesses, as you can see, and it's held up very well. This vehicle has an old MoTeC module, not a MoCan module, and it's working just fine. I'm not sure if we're going to upgrade it or not. One thing for sure, though, is back east, the weather can really take a toll on not only the electronics and all the connectors, but the metal parts and pretty much everything else. This is an oddity in that this Jeep may be going back to California. And we're going to be talking about that in a future 
video about California and some of the challenges that that poses. So that's a quick glimpse of what's going on right now, and we'll keep you updated on some of these bills. Thanks.